you doing? I'm Dave and that's Glenn, one of the NC Beer Guys, and this is part of the NC Beer Buzz. Today, we're at the Ass Clown Brewery, which is in Cornelius, just north of Charlotte. We're here to talk to Matt Glidden, who is the owner and brewer here. We're here to talk beer. Let's go inside. Matt, we appreciate you being here with us today. Hey, thank uh, we you. We want to get into your head a little bit about brewery, what you're doing here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be here as Ass Clown Brewing? Sure. I started brewing out in my garage about eight years ago and um, just loved, absolutely loved it. No matter how much I did it, I just knew that was my mission, passion right. in life. I uh, decided uh, three years ago to go commercial and uh, took a while to get through all the, the, I guess, the proper steps to get fully commercial and licensed in the whole nine yards. And, and you've been in this location? Uh, for two months. Okay. And then we're at the old location, about four miles up the road, for about a year. So we're pretty new at this. Yes. Good. So, one of the things, of course, is where did that name come from? How did you get Ass Clown? Uh, it came about two ways. I, um, I do mortgages on the side. That's what <laughs> also helps pay the bills. Ass Clown mortgage. <laughs> ass <Right>. Clown mortgage. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's quite a few Ass Clowns in that. But, uh, but it, how it came about is a, a buddy that was working for me called me an Ass Clown one day, and it just kind of, uh, I just thought it was pretty hilarious and I started using the word pretty loosely as well and ne noticed everybody I was talking to was kind of using it a lot and just thought that was a pretty catchy name but at the same time I was going to beer festivals trying a bunch of great beers and walk away the next day after being two sheets in the wind you, it's hard to remember the names I wanted to buy sure. so that's really what pushed me I was like how can you forget a name like that how Ooh. unique can you be well right. yeah, yeah and yeah. people don't forget when they drank Ass clown. No, I can't imagine <laughs> forgetting a name like that, even if you're, even sure. if you are drunk. That's drunk. Right. Yeah. So, if you had to say what the mission of Ass Clown was, what are you doing with beer or for beer that might be different than anybody else? What's your point? Uh, I feel like I'm approaching it a few different ways. Number one, uh, we're to about 80 different kinds of beers that we're rotating out. So, for me, it's just a way of not getting stuck brewing the same thing all the time. Um, just trying to find as many palettes, I guess, as I can to see. Uh, you never know what you'll come across. Mm -hmm. So my mission in life is to, to find that great beer, and I feel like I have to go through millions of batches to get to that, maybe. Well, it's a, <laughs> in terms of experimenting, because I just look at over there, where you've got a coffee, tequila, oatmeal, stout. Yes. Um, and, I mean, and actually looking at the menu of the ones that you do do, it's crazy the flavors. Oh, I mean, things you would never imagine for beer. And to me, it's kind of like the Cold Stone creamier beer because <laughs> you just put the... I mean, how, how often do you experiment? I mean, where do you come up with these ideas to really get Every them? week. Um, we do three to four new batches every week. Um, last week we just did a, a rosemary, coriander, black wheat IPA. <laughs> Uh, we're doing a bacon oyster stout. Bacon oyster. Bacon oyster. Yes. I don't even no. put those two together <laughs> in real foods. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, uh, to me, a lot of inspiration comes from food, and I like to match a lot of beers with food, and I'll, I'll taste something and be like, wow, why is this not in my beer, or, right. or how can I incorporate this in my beer? And the all these flavors of beers, now they are some of the basic beers that then we flavor, or are they different beers from the get-go? A lot of the, in the last, Ten years or so, um, I've taken a lot of the. Uh, I don't even know how many recipes, but uh, just and pulled something out of each of them, and then kind of got my staples that I wanted for the recipes, and then now I just keep adding to them. And like we originally had a, a Belgian that I just felt like uh, after 30 times the Belgian recipe, I just couldn't quite get what I wanted out of it, and so we just threw in a crap load of butter, brown sugar, and cinnamon sticks, and apples, and made a buttered apple pie out of it, which gives oh, it a that's nice, amazing. That's amazing. beautiful buttered finish to it. So, um, a lot of it comes from uh, recipes that, even if the recipe's not great, you still pull something out of it to move into right. the next one. So. And when, when you're doing these different flavors, what size of production is that, in case it sucks? They're all, they're all 40 gallons. All 40 gallons. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. That's a huge commitment to a flavor. Yeah. yeah, but knock on wood, I've yet to... Uh, Throw anything away. Yeah, yeah. That's course. great. I don't want to jinx myself. But That's right, of course, uh, of course. But uh, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like I've brewed enough times that I'm, I'm not, not like I'm sticking something in there like ketchup or something that I, you know what I mean? Right, you know. <laughs> but at the work. same time, yeah, it's kind of, you know you can get away with it. And For those of us who, who can't see, we've got a little tap room, a little tasting yeah. area yep. over on the side. 
Uh, but other than here, where else can people get your brew? Uh, we're at about eight local bars in the area, um, like the Flatiron, Galway Hooker, uh, Bricks, place okay. like that where you can go and try our beers. We try to do different beers with every bar. And some bottle shops too with growlers? Or uh, no, we uh, we are going to be doing 22 ounce bottles in the next month, mm -hmm. uh, especially of our wet hop IPAs, which is one of my favorites. Okay. Um, but for right now, the only spot is the bars and tasting room. So. Is that just for logistical reasons for distribution, or you just want to uh, keep the quality? We're, in? We're, we're licensed to sell the growlers at retail locations, but where it's just me, that would be bottling them. Yes. And. And I love a growler. And hauling them out there and doing it all. Yeah, and yeah. I, don't get me wrong, I love a growler. I feel like a growler is great if it's drank within a week or two. Right. But I just don't know if it, it would keep the quality three or four months down the road or two sure. months down the road. So that's kind of really what is, I have the ability to do it, but yeah, I'm holding off on it until I get the 22 ounces. And for sure. quality control issues yeah. more than anything else at this time. Yeah, I trust, yeah, I trust the bottle more than I trust the growler. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we call our bonders. That's right. <laughs> so, um, where do you see Ask Clown going? What are, what are your ambitions? I'm not trying to be the next large brewery out there. My goal is just uh, to be small, but yet make a living at it. Mm -hmm. sure. And uh, it's pretty hard to do now because I'm so small. But I'm hoping to keep staying the, the right course. That uh, you know, really, all I'm looking for is, is just to do what I love and. Uh, this, I mean, with your originality, it's it's incredible. I mean, with all the flavors you offer, like, where some have staples of maybe six beers they do and maybe a couple seasonals. I mean, it seems like you've got enough to satisfy several breweries because of all the different flavors you offer. Yeah, yeah, and that's again for me it keeps it interesting. Like yes. I, like I tell everybody, more than likely you won't love every single one of our beers, but hopefully we'll find one or two or God only knows how many mm -hmm. out of the hopefully a hundred beers that we have down the road kind of things. So. Right. Uh, we're going to draw this to a close, but one last question, since we're looking at statewide coverage for us and trying to get people interested in NC beer statewide, where do you see the movement in North Carolina with beer, craft beer going? Is there room for everybody? Or some people going to fall by the wayside? What are you thinking? I, I think there's plenty of room in North Carolina, and I think North Carolina's an awesome state for it. And right now i got about a Myself, I got about 160 plants that I'm growing, and from 40 different varieties, and I think growing your own hops. You growing my own hops, okay. yeah. and I feel like the, this area can can get the soil and the weather can handle it. And um, I feel like everybody's kind of doing their own thing on the beer, so I feel like uh, more the merrier. Mm -hmm. I know every time I go to a place, I always drink something different. I don't drink the same thing over and over, so right. I, I can't imagine there being too many breweries. Great. Matt, we appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, until next time, we hope you will uh, follow us on the website at ncbeerguys.com. Remember, I'm Glenn. This is Dave. We've been here with Matt Glidden at Ask Clown Brewing in Cornelius. And until next time, uh, remember, drink local. Keep your beer dogs in North Carolina. We'll catch you later, buds.